Hi. The whole way we think is limited by our perception of how to do things. If we change those perceptions, we can change virtually anything. For example, here I've got two brushes, one long thin one called a rigger and a little square ended brush here as well. And I've got two little blobs of paint, white and blue. I've chosen those colours so they show against my skin. I've dampened both my brushes. Now, at school, you would have been taught to draw one colour at a time and then add highlights and lowlights later. In that way, you get a very flat picture. But if instead we lay on this nice long thin brush, one colour on one side and the other colour on the other, we've now got two colours on the same brush, not mixed together, but completely separate. In this way, we can end up with a far more real looking picture because in reality, nothing is one flat colour. So a tree, for example, grows from the ground up, but very often we draw it downwards first because the alphabet, all the letters downstroke first. So we're going to start this tree from the ground where it would have grown from, and we're going to rise up slowly. And as we do, we come up more and more and more onto the point of the brush and we get thinner and thinner lines with two colours. We're then going to come up again, almost as if we're coming back up the motorway, no more paint and up for the next one. I'm now coming up the trunk for a third time and then billowing out for the branches and twigs. The paint isn't being renewed because this means that each time I paint, I'm getting thinner and thinner lines and less and less paint. So it's easier to get something realistic. Now, when I've done that, this is the time that I could reload my brush, not before. So I'm reloading with the blue on one side again, the white on the other. We're going to do this tree in three parts. And so I'm now going to go not up the middle as you would expect, but I'm going up the other side because the two sides of the tree are further away from you than the middle. And again, each time I come up, I'm not adding more paint, but I'm going back to the motorway or the origin of the tree, and then I'm pulling out. And as the paint diminishes, I'm using that as an excuse to create ever thinner, finer, more fragile branches and lines. And you can see in this way, we get a real sense of realism. And the fact that certain areas of the tree, say here, have come up a bit lighter and brighter is a good thing because in reality, we don't get just one colour. I'm now going to do the last part of the tree, the centre, because it's the nearest part to us. And I'm coming up again from the ground, the same direction the tree grew. Two colours again, and these branches yet again will begin to lay in front of all its previous ones. And this way you start getting a really three dimensional form. Now, if they don't work perfectly, and to be honest, this last part of mine hasn't, don't panic, don't get upset, don't say this is rubbish and don't throw it away, just keep going. So it still looks pretty good, I think you'd agree. It's pretty tree-like, it's got depth, it's got 3D, it's got light and shade. So we're going to keep going with it because nature is never perfect anyway in terms of everything being balanced and symmetrical. That's the view we have as a child almost of everything beautiful to be symmetrical, whereas in fact nature is stunning and yet rarely symmetrical. Now this time I'm using the square brush and I put white on one side and blue on the other. Light shines from above so I'm going to start at the top of the trunk and I'm going to make pressed marks horizontally and pressing up into them a bit. And the base of them each time starts looking like the bottom of a cluster of leaves. And the top is the lighter, so looks like the top of a cluster of leaves. And again, I don't reload my brush because as the paint diminishes and fades, we get an amazing illusion 
of peripheral vision round the edges and the top by not reloading. And I think you'd agree it starts to look really quite amazing. Now, if I use that same brush with no further paint and press up at the bottom, white up, blue down, we end up with this incredible tree in just four brush strokes, really four loadings of paint. There we go. I hope you enjoyed it.